Good, you're back. I'm Neom, and today's episode is about Sir Sidney Smith. Please remember to leave a like on this video, and let me know your favorite military story in the comments. Let's get into it. There's a lot to talk about regarding this guy's life, so allow me to summarize his youth a bit. Sidney Smith was born in London in 1764. His father was a captain of the guard, and he had other familial ties to nobility. At just 13, he joined the military to fight against the American colonists in the Revolutionary War. His first post was to a turtle, but he later was promoted to a more exotic animal. In 1779, he arrived in a city that was at the mouth of a port, and joined a ship that was a bit full of itself. His next assignment was to eat a sandwich or something, where his captain was apparently young. He was made a lieutenant for his bravery and strategic ability. Then he took a greyhound, first to Virginia, then southeast to fight in the Battle of St. Kitts. This was about a year before Nevis entered the picture. Smith got promotion after promotion, accomplishing every task he'd been assigned to, showing wit and creativity at every turn. This pattern continued, battle after battle, and ship after ship, until eventually, peace broke out between the US and Britain, and he found himself out of the job. He spent some time in Istanbul where his brother worked at the embassy. But most of his unemployment was spent venturing around the Mediterranean, learning the languages, and becoming familiar with the land. Opportunity arose when he was invited to join the Swedish Navy under King Gustav III. Not as a mere cabin boy either, no sir. King Gustav took on the 26-year-old Sidney Smith as his chief naval advisor, a choice that proved to be the right one. Smith engaged the Russians in the Battle of Svensgund in 1790 in an absolute wash, the Russians losing 64 ships to Sidney Smith's four ships. Gustav 3.0 was so pleased that he made Smith a Knight of Sweden, a title which would be honored by even King George of England. Hearing about the French Revolution and the conflict with Britain, Smith rushed to join the fight, though he was still technically unemployed by any military. Gathering together 40 men and setting out to France in the Swallow, they set fire to and destroyed half of the French fleet. In command of the French operation was none other than Colonel Napoleon Bonaparte. Napoleon, who was said to be a superstitious person, found out who was heading up the attack, and from that point on, he would curse the name of Smith, and even go silent for hours upon hearing it spoken. It wasn't long before the two met in battle again, but this time, fortune favored Napoleon, and he was able to capture Sir Sidney Smith. Over the next two years, while Smith was imprisoned in Paris, Napoleon attempted many times to have him tried for arson. Fortunately for Sir Sidney, no one was willing to prosecute. He used his time in captivity to compose a letter to Monsieur Bonaparte, which he wrote on the window shutters to his prison cell. One has to admit that fortune's wheel makes strange revolutions, but before it can be truly called a revolution, the turn of the wheel must be complete. Today, you are as high as you can be, but I do not envy you your happiness, because I have a still greater happiness, and that is to be as low in fortune's wheel as I can go, so that as soon as the capricious lady who turns the wheel does so again, I shall rise for the same reason that you shall fall. The rest of his letter is equally savage, and I recommend checking out the video by Lindy Beige in the description for a much longer and more detailed telling of the Sidney Smith story. After spending two years locked up in Paris, Sir Sidney escaped prison with the help of his French connections and rejoined the Royal Navy. Smith and Bonaparte met in battle again and again, with Smith defeating him nearly every single time. When Napoleon launched his operation to conquer his way around the Mediterranean, Smith was right behind him, making life as difficult as possible. In order to gain favor with the locals of wherever he was at a given time, Napoleon would tell outrageous lies pandering to certain people groups. For example, telling the Christians that he would protect them from the Muslims, and telling the Muslims that he was there to protect them from the Christians, and handing out propaganda flyers to each group that said so in their own language. Sir Sidney saw what was going on and implemented an absolutely ingenious strategy. Hmm? Hmm? Uh-huh. Hmm? Hmm? Uh -huh. uh -huh. There were many, many more instances in which Napoleon was thwarted by Smith, told ridiculous lies, abandoned or killed his own soldiers, and Sidney Smith was there to hinder him every time. In one instance, Napoleon refused an offer from Smith to evacuate the wounded French troops because it would mean admitting defeat. Instead, Napoleon abandoned his troops entirely and retreated, leaving his second-in-command with no food, no ships, and no money to pay the troops. Eventually, Napoleon was captured and imprisoned. He would later escape and be finished off in the Battle of Waterloo. But while he was in prison, he wrote in his memoirs that Sir Sidney Smith was the reason he had missed his destiny. Check out this playlist for more great military stories. And if you enjoyed this video, leave a like. Subscribe for more content, ring the bell to be notified about new videos, 
and comment what you want to learn about next. I'm Neom, and I'll see you next time.